Hello and thank you once again for checking this video and subscribing to my channel. Today's discussion will revolve around rational function. So keep still, let's dive in into the lesson after this. Our focus is about the domain and range of a rational function. Let's review the definition of these terms. So the domain of a function is the set of all values that the variable x can take. While the range of a function is the set of all values that y or f of x can take. Now let's straight ahead on our examples. So we got five numbers for these examples and we will solve them one by one. Now let's have number one f of x equals x plus 3 over x minus 3. To get the domain of this function, we have to set our denominator to 0. So that is d of x equals 0. So our, since our denominator is x minus 3, that would become x minus 3 equals 0. And then we will just move negative 3 on the other side. That would become x equals 3. As usual, we cannot have 0 on our denominator because that would give us an undefined term. So x equals 3 should become x is not equal to 3. Therefore, our domain is the set of all x such that x is an element of real number where x is not equal to 3. So in finding the range of a rational functions, we need few methods to follow. Number one, we will replace f of x with y and then just simply copy our original uh, function. So we have y equals x plus 3 over x minus 3. Then from here, we will simply multiply, cross multiply, and our result would be y times x minus 3 equals x plus 3. Then we will apply the method distribution. So y times x and then y times negative 3. And the result would be x, min x times y minus 3y equals x plus 3. Then from here, we will move common terms on either side. So we will have x, y minus x. So x value will move on the left side and then negative 3y will move on the right side. So that becomes 3y plus 3. Then from here, we can factor out the common terms x, y, minus x, that would become x times the quantity y minus 1 equals 3y plus 3. And then we will proceed with our equality. So we, will, we can divide both sides by y minus 1. Okay, so x times y minus 1 over y minus 1 equals 3y plus 3 over y minus 1. So we can cancel y minus 1. And then we will just simply left with the value of x. So we have x equals 3y plus 3 all over at y minus 1. Then from here, we can apply the same rule we, in finding the domain, simply setting the denominator to 0. So that is dx equals 0, which is y minus 1 equals 0. Then moving terms on the other side, so that becomes y equals 1. So therefore, since y equals 1 is our restriction, we can consider that as y is not equal to 1. So the set of range is y, which is the element of real numbers, such that y is not equal to 1. Now let's move on. On our example number 2, we have f of x equals 3x minus 4 all over 5x minus 7. So let's set the denominator to 0. That becomes 5x minus 7 equals 0. And then moving negative 7 to the other side, that becomes 5x equals 7. And then divide both sides by 5. We have 5x divided by 5 equals 7 over 5. So we will just simply cancel the coefficient. Then we will just simply left with x equals 7 over 5, which is also x should that be equal to 7 over 5. And therefore, that would be our domain. So it's a set of all x such that x is an element of real numbers where x is not equal to 7 over 5. Okay, 
Let's find the range of this function f of x equals 3x minus 4 over 5x minus 7. Then we will replace f of x with y, so that is equivalent to 3x minus 4 over 5x minus 7. And then we will just simply multiply both sides by 5x minus 7, so we have y times 5x minus 7 equals 3x minus 4. Then distribute that this uh, variable inside the parentheses. So the result would be 5xy minus 7y equals 3x minus 4. Then from here, we can combine like terms or simply transferring number on the other side. So we will have 5xy minus 3x equals 7y minus 4. Then from here, we can also isolate the variable x, which is the common term. That becomes x times 5y minus 3 equals 7y minus 4. And then it's the same. We can divide both sides by 5y minus 3 so that we can cancel this number. And then we will just simply left with x equals 7y minus 4 all over 5y minus 3. And so from there, we can uh, get the denominator to 0. The x, d of x equal to 0. That becomes 5y minus 3 equals 0. And then moving on to the other side, 5y equals 3. Divide both sides by 5. So y becomes 3 over 5. So that is our restriction. y should not be equal to 3 over 5. And that is our set of range. So the set of all y's such that y is an element of real number, whereas y is not equal to 3 over 5. Moving on with number 3, we have f of x equals x plus 5 over x squared. Okay, so let's find the domain. Let's set the denominator to 0. So we have x squared plus 0. And then simply square both sides. That becomes x equals 0. And then x should not be equal to 0. And that would be our domain. So it's the set of all x such that x should not be equal to 0. Then move. Now let's find the range of our uh, question number 3. f of x equals x plus 5 over x squared. So that is y equals x plus 5 over x squared. Multiply both sides by x squared. So we have y x squared equals x plus 5. And then let's just move x plus 5 on the other side to form a trinomial. Okay, so we have y x squared minus x minus 5 greater than or equal to 0. So notice that we change the equation symbol into inequality. That's because the coefficient of x squared is a positive number. So that means the parabola will open upward. So that's the simple explanation to that reason. Okay? But still, we cannot simply factor the trinomial using trial and error or completing the square. So we will try the quadratic formula. But the variable y, this one, will not allow us to do that. Instead, we can use the formula, which is the discriminant, which is b squared minus 4ac. So we have this, co we, we shall simply get this coefficient y simply equivalent to a, and the negative 1 si simply b, and the negative 5 is simply c. So let's have that. So a is equal to y, and then b is equal to negative 1, and c is equal to negative 5. Then from here, we can simply replace that to our discriminant. That is negative 1 raised to the second power minus 4 times a, which is y, times negative 5, which is your c, greater than or equal to 0. So let's simplify it. So we have 1 plus 20y greater than or equal to 0. And then let's just simply isolate y from the other term. So we have 20y greater than or equal to negative 1. And then divide both sides by 20. That becomes y is greater than or equal to negative 1 over 20. And then we now have our range. 
So the range is the set of all y's such that y is an element of real numbers where y is greater than or equal to negative 1 over 20. Okay? And we have the set of that number. Okay, now number 4. So f of x equals x squared minus 1 over x plus 1. So by analyzing the given, we can see that we can simplify the term. So let's do that first. Okay, so x squared minus 1, so the factor is simply x plus 1 times x minus 1 divided by x plus 1. Okay, and then if we divide this term, we can simply cancel x plus 1 from the numerator and the denominator and just we will just simply let with f of x equals x minus 1. So from a rational function, when we simplify the term, it becomes a linear function. So from here, our set of domain are all real numbers and also the range is the set of all real numbers. Okay, so for our last question, we have f of x equals x squared minus 7x plus 5 all over x squared minus 3x minus 4. So let's set the denominator to 0. So we have x squared minus 3x minus 4 equals 0. And then let's factor this term into a binomial. So we have x plus 1 times the quantity x minus 4. And then we will equate both factors to 0. So we have x plus 1 equals 0 and then x minus 4 equals 0. So x plus 1 becomes x equals negative 1 where x should not be equal to negative 1. And then x equals 4 where x should not be equal to positive 4. Okay? So the set of domain for this number is all real numbers except negative 1 and 4. Okay, now to find the range of the function f of x, let's borrow the idea of the asymptote using the rule n of x is equal to d of x, which gives us the asymptote that is y equals to a over b. Okay, so this time around, our horizontal asymptote is equal to y equals 1. So this is also test if the asymptote restrict the graph to intersect. Okay, so let's use this idea. 1 is equal to x squared minus 7x plus 5 all over x squared minus 3x minus 4. Okay, so by multiplying both sides by the denominator, so we have x squared minus 3x minus 4, that's times 1, equals x squared minus 7x plus 5. Then let's move the common terms on the other side so we can isolate the variable x. So let's move x squared and negative 7x on this side and then negative 4 on this side. So we have x squared minus x squared minus 3x plus 7x equals 4 plus 5. So x, min x squared minus x squared is just simply 0. We have negative 3x plus 7x equals 4 plus 5. That is 4x equals 9. So we, we can divide now both sides by 4. So we have the final result that is x equals 9 over 4. So if y is equal to 1 and then x is 9 over 4, so therefore the asymptote has no restriction with the graph. So if that's the case, therefore our range is the set of all real numbers. That would be all. Don't forget to leave a like, comment if you learned something, and also subscribe to my channel.